Now, what are the other activation functions? The one activation function which is very common, which we have already done in one of your classification algorithms, is this function. Which function? Which which classification algorithm did you use this function? Logistic regression. What is the function of the logistic regression? To compress otherwise continuous into a discrete. How do you do it? By running a sigmoid curve where you said that minus infinity to plus infinity it will take, but the transition between 0 to 1 happens in a very rapid manner. So the curve is like this, and then like this, and like this, right? So you need to understand that it gives some kind of a discrete nonlinear possibility for introducing into an otherwise linear sum. So sigmoid is a very powerful activation function. Very often, lots of neural networks use sigmoid as a corresponding activation function. Then what are the other activation functions? Let's say linear. This is a very simple one. What you say is, whatever you get as the output of sigma of WXI, just pass it. So here, we don't have too much generality because you don't have nonlinearity. These are not so complex in the sense that they can't capture too many equations or too many inputs. Whereas, a sigmoid function can actually do a lot better in terms of capturing lots of nonlinear scenarios. Then, there is another variant of this, which is what we call as tan hyperbolic x, which is what gives you e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x by e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x. What this does is, since the logistic function, which is sigmoid function, is only on one side of the axis, 0 and 1, right? But there are many scenarios where values oscillate between minus and plus. So there, it is a good idea to have hyperbolic tangent or tan hyperbolic x, where it goes to minus 1 and 1. Abrupt change just like sigmoid, but it is useful for treating both positive and negative with equal importance. So now you see what role of activation function does. The linear sum which you get from your input nodes, it is compressing that to some nonlinear behavior. There's another which is very interesting one, which is very common and which is going to be the basis of all the CNN architectures which we're going to study later in the course. It's called value. What it says is suppress anything which is negative. Don't even give any output. But the moment you get something positive, you emit it. So this is like a filter which filters out any value which is less than 0. And anything beyond 0, it will just emit x. So now think about what is going to be the path of the values when you go from input all the way to output. You will have x1, x2 as the inputs. Then you will go to compute sigma of wxi as the first layer. Then go to see what is the activation function. That output will become the output of that node. Like that for each of the first layer nodes you get the outputs. Then those become inputs for the next layer. You look at what are the W, I, X, I, S, look at the activation function, get the outputs. Like that, this goes on layer to layer till you reach the output node. So what this does is it gives you a forward propagation technique for computing the output value given a particular set of input values of all the X, I, S and the input node. And now what is important is is that good enough for us? Is the first time when you run the sequence from start to end with randomly chosen Ws? <coughs> Initially, what will be the Ws? You choose randomly. You give the random values to each connection. And is that random value going to lead you to the expected output? You run it on inputs, right? X10, X20. You run it on W1, W2 and W0. Then next layer you go to another W2, 1, W2, 2, W2, 3 is there, right? You take that as output of first one, you put it, take it and give it as output. But do you think you are going to get to the target value of the output which you expect? 
will you reach the goal of expected value with all these random w's answer is no right you cannot expect that you will converge to the target value in first shot so one pass is not good enough this is another accuracy function which is also used but not so rare, so much but one of the other nonlinear functions what it says is it's an abrupt change between minus 1 and 1 